You're watching EAC News. Thanks for joining us. The International Space Station is set to become busier than usual this week when its crew welcomes aboard four new colleagues from the Houston-based startup Axiom Space, the first of all private astronaut team ever flown into the orbiting outpost. The launch is being hailed by the company, NASA and other industry players as a turning point in the latest expansion of commercial space ventures collectively referred to by insiders as the Low Earth Orbit Economy, or LEO Economy for short. Weather permitting, Axiom's four-man team will lift off on Friday the 8th of April at the earliest from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Riding atop a Falcon 9 rocket finished and flown by Elon Musk's commercial space launch venture, SpaceX. The launch was initially scheduled for Wednesday, April the 6th, as Axiom stated did not give a reason for the delay, but the company said its website is continue pre-launch processing work. If all goes smoothly, the quartet led by retired NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Algera will arrive at the space station 28 hours later as their SpaceX supplied crew Dragon capsule docks at ISS some 250 miles above Earth. Lopez Algera, 63, is the Spanish-born mission commander and Axiom's vice president of the business development. He is set to be joined by Larry Connor, a real estate agent and technology entrepreneur and aerobics avatar for AHO designated as a mission pilot. Connor is in his late 70s, but the company did not provide his precise age. Rounding out the X1 team are investor, philanthropist and former Israel fighter pilot Ethan Stibble, 64, and Canadian businessman and philanthropist Mark Pathy, 52, both serving a mission specialist. Stibble is set to become the second Israel in space after Ihan Ramon, who perished with the six NASA crewmates in the 2003 Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. The X-1 crew may appear to have a lot in common with many of the wealthy passengers taking subtorial rides lately aboard the Blue Origin and the Virgin Galactical Service, offered by billionaires Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson, respectively. But the Axiom executive said their mission is more substantive. It is the beginning of many beginnings for the commercialising low-Earth orbit, Axiom's co-founder and executive chairman, Cam Gafferan, told Rotus in an interview, we like the early days of the internet and we haven't even imagined all the possibilities or the capabilities that we are going to be providing in the space. The so-called X1 team will be carrying equipment and supplies for 26 science and technology experiments to be conducted before they are slated to leave orbit and return to Earth 10 days after launch. These include research on brain health, cardiac stem cells, cancer and aging, as well as technology demonstration to produce optics using the surface tension of fluids in microgravity, company executive said. Launched to orbit in 1998, ISS have been continuously occupied since 2000 under the US-Russian-led partnership including Canada, Japan and 11 other European countries. While the space station has hosted visits from civilian visitors from time to time, the X-1 mission will mark the first all-commercial team of astronauts to use the ISS for its intended purpose as an orbiting laboratory. They will be sharing the weightless workspace alongside seven regular crew members of the ISS, three US astronauts, a German astronaut and three Russian cosmonauts. Axiom said it has contracted the SpaceX for the fly three more missions to orbit over the next two years. NASA selected Axiom in 2020 to design and develop a new commercial wing to the space station, which currently spans the approximate size of a football field. Flight hardware for the first Axiom module is currently undergoing fabrication, the company has said. Plans call for eventually detaching the Axiom modules from the rest of the outpost when ISS is ready for retirement around 2030, leaving the smaller Axiom station in orbit as a commercial-only platform, Grafferin said. Other private operators are expected to place their own stations in orbit once ISS is decommissioned. We're like early days of internet, and we haven't even imagined all the possibilities, all the capabilities that we're gonna be providing uh, in space. So our, our part is to sort of create this platform, like you said, where it will enable all these other capabilities, all these other companies 
to flourish and do their activities. And we'll be selling uh, that platform as a service for them. We now know that when you go to space, there's a little bit of acceleration in aging, right? And so we're doing some clinical research and saying, wow, if, if there's a little acceleration, can you know, and identifying what causes that acceleration, and by understanding that, can we slow aging or even stop it <laughs> uh, for that matter? And then there's some relationship, for example, to the T cells that we discovered, uh, and, and there is some connectivity to even cancer. So, for example, can we come up with a cure of cancer? Uh, 